Well, it's a lovely spring day. A little bit sarcastic, but this is actually spring. Welcome. It's uh, getting to be spring, and I would like to get my bike ready to go ride. And if anyone wants to see how I'm going to put these fenders on this electric cruiser, you are welcome to come along. Let's go. The shop is a mess because I have not done my spring cleaning yet. It's uh, not quite that dry or nice out. But uh, here's what I've started. I have an Electra Cruiser 1, which is simply a single drive, no gears, no brakes, while well, you pedal backwards to stop. And I want fenders because I am tired of getting that mud stripe up my back and on the back of the seat every time I go for a ride. So I have bought some fenders. Took a while to find them, but I finally got a hold of a pair and I'm going to try to put them on. And I will document this as a little bit of a how-to, although I usually have no idea what I'm doing. These are the fender kits. I got, I got two pairs here. I got black for my bike. So here is, here is the fenders, what they look like. And uh, they're, they're painted to match the, the color of the bike. So that's a, a matte black. And then my wife's bike is white. So we got the same thing, but in a set of white, I'll do hers next if I can figure out mine. Uh, they do not come with a lot of instructions. Uh, basically this, this little package here in the middle of the fenders uh, where the hardware is attached, this is the only thing they give you for instructions. And basically what it says is on the front axle, there's a special washer to put in here. And actually that turned out to be a lie. There is no washer for this one. Uh, but as it turns out, I don't need it for my bike and I'll show you why. And then the only other thing that there is for instructions is down here. It says something about there's long stays for the front fender and short stays for the rear fender. And that's important and because, well, one will fit and one won't. But yeah, just pay attention that there are two different lengths of, of, of stands that come with these things. In addition to the four, sorry, sorry, sorry. In addition to the two, or sorry, the four stands that come with it. They also had these ones in here. And they seem to have a little bit of paint. There's, there's a red, there's a green, and there's a yellow. I have no idea what these are for. I don't know why they're here. I'm guessing there's some sort of model that would need these. I, I don't know. They're, they're all different lengths too. Like they're, like you can see, I can kind of get them set up. Anyways, they're, they're three different lengths. And uh, I don't know why, but they're there, there as well. I'm just gonna set these aside. I'm assuming that I don't need them. Um, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, the other thing I did is that my stands for my bike, uh, I spray painted them black because everything on my bike is black, including the spokes. And when you put these uh, chrome guys on the wheels, they sort of stood out. So I thought, I'm just going to spray paint them. Um, so I did that last night. So I spray painted these things. Um, they're not exactly perfect, but they, they, they look a heck of a lot better. You know, they don't stand out. They're a little more subtle this way, and I like that. Now, what I've done already here is that I have taken off the back tire. Uh, the reason being, by the way, it's a... Uh, it's a 15 millimeter uh, nut on this bike, uh, both sides. And you just loosen them off, uh, the wheel will sort of fall out. When so it becomes loose, I just took the chain off and let it dangle here. I'm trying not to dismantle this as much as possible. Uh, the other thing is that there is the little brake arm that's on the other side, I will show you. So this tire obviously mounts up in here like so. Uh, this has to come out, and that's, that's too bad, because one of the bolts for the fender has to go in this way, and there's really no other way to get it done. So this is a little threaded hole in this little bracket here that's meant for the fender, but the only way to get that little screw in there is to screw it in coming here, and the tire's in the road. Uh, the front tire, I'm hopeful I don't have to take off, but the back one I did. Uh, this little brake arm, you can see it, this is on the frame here, and it's just a little uh, clamp that holds that still. Uh, so a little Phillips, and I think a 10 mil um, wrench took off. That just took it loose. I'll try it. Here, hang on, I'll show you. Here, this is the little, the little clamp, and that just holds this arm rigid with the frame. 
so that when you pedal backwards, uh, it doesn't freewheel and spin, it, it stays still, and that's what gives you a braking action. So you have to loosen this off as well, and just to free that arm. Then there's the uh, 10 mil bolts on both sides, and the wheel just falls forward. Leave the chain dangling here, and that's about it. So it's not so bad. I tried to figure out, is there a way to get at this without taking the tires off? Um, the answer is no. I'll shine a light here so you can see. Right here, there's a little hole and that's got threads in it. Um, I think originally the way they went is that where the, the tire attaches to the frame, you had to take those nuts off and then those little stand arms would go on there. They've added these little threaded holes here and there's one on the other side and you now attach to there. So the back, you wouldn't have had to take the tire off because they have separate attaching points right here and here. But the front, the front uh, by closer to the pedals, that's where you need the tire out of the road. Okay, on the, on the front tire is similar where they have these little holes here and here. And that is where the stands are going to go into. And again, those holes have threads in them. So the little screws they give you with the hardware package will thread straight in there. And the other side's the same. So I don't think that this tire has to come off at all, which is nice. Uh, the other mounting point, pan up here, is right here in the frame, right, right, right where the forks are. So and this hole just goes straight through and they give you a long bolt. Uh, that will go in there and hold the bracket on the top of the fender. So it's supported from the top and then two other sides of the circle. Okay, so let's try to do this. We got four arms. And we have some hardware here. And these have to be attached to the fender before we go to the bike because all these go in from the inside of the fender inwards. So we have to put these in first. Uh, and you see on the fender, there's this little narrowed indent part. Uh, that, that goes around the chain guard. And that's the only way you can sort of figure out which way they're supposed to go on, is that this has to be around the chain guard. So you could argue which way, this way or this way on the wheel, do you want the fender to sit? But this is going to dictate it here. So basically, they're going to get that by the chain guard, and then figure out which of these little holes they drill it in here, because there's three of them. We only need two. So we'll put this on the bike and we'll figure out where exactly it fits. And then we're going to attach these stands you know, on the inside of this fender first before we put it on the bike. So it's going to be these back two holes because there's the, the attaching point and the only other hole is way up over here and there's nowhere to go. So this hole I don't think works for our bike. So we'll use these back two and then it will attach right here at the bottom of the fender as well. There's where that chain guard fits the notch out is right in there. Now I also spray painted the little, the little head of the, of the nut. So yours might not look like this. They come, they kind of look like a chrome, but uh, basically, whoop. I'm just gonna stick this through the hole in the fender we figured out. And then that little, that little part there is just going to get in there. And then I put a washer on and then they give you this little, tiny little lock nut. Oh yeah, this is never there. All right, and then I believe this is a, what is this? This is a, doesn't say, eight millimeter. Eight millimeter, eight millimeter socket driver, and I believe a three mil Allen key. And if you just hold that with the Allen key, and then just tighten it with the nut driver. I'll just leave it slightly loose for now. I'll, I'll tighten it when it's on the bike, but just snug it up. And then do the same thing over on the other one on the rear. And I don't know if you're supposed to position, he's got the little hoop to hoop. Is that supposed to face the front of the back uh, bike or the back of the bike? I don't know. So I'm just gonna put them on one way and if they don't line up, maybe I'll flip them. Okay, so this, this is kind of what we're dealing with. We've got the two little stands on the fender itself, on the bench, 
Now we're going to slide this guy into here, line up that indent where the chain guard goes, and then this is a, a four millimeter little bolt. It's different than the other ones, it's a bit bigger. And then I think if we can get this started in here, this should fit the threading on the front. It's a little bit cross threaded, you gotta get her going straight. And that doesn't work at all. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, I think I managed to get that thread started. I'm just going to make sure that this is in there enough. It's not going to fall out when I'm jostling everything here. Don't tighten it up, of course, because we got to. We just got to like slide up and down a little bit there. But I think the chain guard is going to kind of dictate how far we go, and that's just the way it's going to be. Okay, I'll get this lined up where the chain guard is supposed to be, and I'll cinch this bolt down a bit, and then we'll work on the back prongs. Okay, now this should be fun. So everything's floppy and you can't let go of it or it'll bend the fender. So I have to get this started in this hole without, yeah. And everything wants to move. I don't know where I put my Allen key. Here it is. Oh, I got lucky, okay. So that just threads in there like that. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose and I got to do the other side too. And just to be consistent, I'm going to this top down arm. It was on the inside, so I'll do the same thing. Uh, again, no idea if that's the right way to do it or not. And now everything is sort of fighting me a bit more. And this isn't the best Allen key. By the way, Oh, 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 did I get it? Come on. Oh, I think I got it. Okay, good, good, good. That went way worse than the dress rehearsal before I had them painted. Okay, so that's definitely in there. So good, so the fender's on. Uh, by the way, these bolts look the same as a lot of other bolts they give you, but there's two of them that are just, just like a hair longer. And those are the ones for back here, because if you just grab a random bolt and you get one of the slightly shorter ones, you, you it is almost impossible to get this. There's just not enough thread showing to get it started. Um, so I kind of clued into that after I, I fought with it for like 20 minutes and like how could one side go in and the other side will not go. And then I got looking, it's like, yeah, there's slightly different size of hardware. So be aware of that. There's only two of them in the kit that I found. So set those two aside, they're for back here. They're for back here on the back wheel. Okay, another problem. With my chain dangling there, now it's trapped behind the fender. So I gotta loosen this guy off a little bit to try and get my chain out of there without scratching up my fender too bad. I gotta see if I can coax it by. There we go, okay. Okay, so just be careful there. Okay, now the fun part is we gotta get that tire back on there and hopefully get it in the same spot. Of course, make sure that this arm is on the uh, left side of the bike. And then all this, all this chain wanted to fall back in. Of course it wants them. It'll fall in the hole, but you can't get it to stay out. It'll get pinned back there somehow, but if you let go, it just falls in like there was nothing there. Ah, give me a minute. Okay, attempt number two. I got the chain on the front sprocket. I got it back up in the chain guard where it's supposed to be. I'm kind of just holding it there. Now you use your third other hand you don't have to kind of hold everything in place. Wait, did I? Yes, okay. Eh. I need out, out. Get. What's it, is it interfering on the fender? There we go, okay. Oh wait, no, no, I'm wrong, we got. I think you gotta get the chain on first before you lock it into place, hang on. Hey. And now it's stuck against the fender. 
<sighs> okay, attempt. Attempt number three. I got the chain on the back one before I raise it up. And now I gotta get past the fender in the front. And then I gotta figure out where was this? I think the washers are supposed to go between. There we are. There. Of course, you can't see a thing. Nope. Washer, you gotta go forward. Yeah. This is where all the bike shop guys are laughing at me right now. Okay. So that took uh, way more effort than it ever should have, which is why I really didn't want to take off the tire, but I didn't know how else to attach that front mount of the fender. So it's back on. I marked where the nuts were on the frame. So I think I have the tire back about where it is, but you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So who knows, but we got to put that little brake arm back into place. So uh, that's the next challenge. And that's just a big Phillips screwdriver and a little 10 mil wrench. And all it is, if you can see in here, there's this little bracket. And this little arm guy here. And of course I expect nothing to ever line up anymore because that's just how life goes. Come on, why is it? All right, so there's a hole there that's supposed to line up with this guy, but that arm is a little too high. I think it's jammed against the frame. I can't. Huh. Oh, and by the way, uh, the only way I seemed to be able to work with it was that I actually deflated the tire a little bit. And that seemed to get enough clearance in the front fender to the tire that I could wiggle it back on. So I just softened up the tire enough that it was sort of squished by. Um, that's kind of how I got past that one. Now this arm is in the wrong spot. So I don't know what's that about. I okay, so I loosened off the back nuts again for like the fifth time because apparently you got to get this arm pinned in here before you tighten everything up or else everything just snugs against the frame and it's tight and you can't do anything. So I loosened it, put this little Phillips screw in. Now, you gotta use a little child's fingers to try and get back in there and try to get this nut started. Did I get it? Well, I think so, okay. So I'm going to, uh, get this kickstand out of the way. I'm gonna just snug this thing here now. There, okay. And now we'll try to retighten that wheel without it being in the wrong spot. Again. Uh, that needs to come back a little bit. That chain is just a hair floppy. So I'll try to reef it back while I tighten it. I'm sure this will not work at all, but here we go. I think that's as close as I'm gonna, whoop, oh, close as I'm gonna get. I'm gonna snug those up. Okay. Is that actually on? Does it turn? Yes. Does it pedal? Yes. Brake? Yes. We have to put air back in the tire, but I think it's on. Okay. Second burst, same as the first. I really hope it's not that bad, but I have a feeling it will be. Okay. Well, front one shouldn't be as bad. We don't have to take the tire off, but we have to get these little arms on here. That's not the right, that's for that one. This one. Come on. 
Okay, get, you get the idea. I'll just give me a minute. Okay, so the front fender, once you get these little stands on, it, it does become awkward because you have to start sort of from the back. I'm assuming that this little bracket you want on the back side instead of on the front. You, you probably don't want to see it. So I came from the back and then rotated up into here. And like the chain guard has indents to the fender for the back, this has indents for where the two forks are. So that tells you where this is going to go. Um, so it's a little bit of a trick getting these arms past in the forks here. They're a little tight. So do your best not to scratch all your paint job up. So glad I spent like two hours painting them. And uh, once you get this sort of rotated through, then you take the long bolt that's in there and there's only one nut that fits it. And that just goes through the hole that's in the, right at the bottom of the forks. So that's sort of in there, it's all loose. But I'll get these now attached to their two mounting points on the frame, which have their own mounting points. So we don't take the tire off and it's out in the open, it's better. So uh, I'll do that and uh, I'll show you when it's done. I do like that these are threaded. You don't need to put a nut behind them. They just thread in. That is nice. And that they're out in the open, way easier than the back tire. Yeah, these, are, these are four mil uh, hex key again, if you're wondering. Do, 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 do. That's a 10 mil. They went kind of overboard on the length here. Okay, so everything's snugged up. Look it. The tires even spin and they're not rubbing on the fender. So I think that's a good sign. We'll, uh, We'll put her down and we'll maybe go for a ride, see how it looks. Okay, so there she is. Uh, put some air back in the tire. Fenders are on. You were able to sort of straighten this by twisting like back and forth like this on these little, on these little arms that we put on. So I think if you twist them crooked, it might look like a fender's off to one side or the other. You can straighten that a bit by just sort of twisting like that a little bit till it's straight. So I think it looks reasonable. Hopefully don't get mud up my back anymore. Let's go for a ride. Okay, so far so good. Oh, I should, I should check if I actually have brakes. Yes, yes I do. Okay, good. So that part of the video was right. I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna get a video of the back fender. Let's, uh, here, I'll try this. Oh yeah, it'll fall off for sure. Well, thanks for joining me. Hope this helps you. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering, a fender set like this cost me 67 bucks Canadian. Uh, this is in 2022. And it actually took me a while to find a place that even had them in stock. So I don't know if that's just a supply chain deal or, or what, but uh, anyway, I'm happy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.